Growing up in the 60s was not easy without a father. When I first heard Paul McCartney is dead, I felt sorry for his family, especially the unclaimed kids. If Paul was really dead, they lost their father and needed a chance to bond with him. If he was replaced by an imposter, they would have to watch helplessly. What could have been theirs became taken by someone else. But what can we do? It has been 50 years and no one has proved anything. It is time to put the rumor to rest. We, as Beatles fans, want to know the truth. And we hope our video released three months ago can bring attention to this matter. If Bettina and Philip can do a joint blood test and find out if they share the same father, it could solve this age-old puzzle. Do you remember in 1995, DHL's founder Larry Hilblom lost his life in a plane crash at the age of 52? His death was a mystery because they never found his body, although they found the other two passengers in the plane he was in. His home was cleaned of any trace of him, so no DNA can be found. The Medical Research Institute he donated his entire $600 million estate hired the best lawyer to fight the many paternity claims that popped up after his death. What do you think their chance of winning may be? Remember, there is no DNA of any kind from the alleged father. Even though these kids are from poor, uneducated families that had to sell their mothers for food, they won because DNA proved that four of them shared the same father. What are the chances of two girls from the Philippines, one in Vietnam, and one in Guam, having kids that share the same father? The only connections these mothers have are their sexual encounters with Larry Hilblom. And that is how Win B. Lori got his 100 million when he turned 18. It is interesting in Larry Hilblom's case because unbeknown to most, Larry was actually a lawyer. He could have blocked these kids' inheritance with a simple clause in his will, but he did not do it. Was it a simple oversight or an intentional omission? Either way, this case proved that what can be done was done and should be done again. When I released my first Paul video on April 17, 2016, I thought we could solve the puzzle if we can test Bettina's DNA with Paul's brother. But I soon realized that may be more difficult than I thought. So on May 9, 2016, I released another video to show how we can reach the same goal if Bettina can do a DNA test with her supposed half-brother Philip. And yesterday, while watching the video, Paul McCartney's son says Paul died in 1966, a video by Gary King, I realized the ripples from the small stone I cast three months ago reached another possible illegitimate son, Stephen Dickinson. Stephen already tried to get in touch with Bettina, Philip, and Michelle. Although not yet successful, the tide may turn any time. The video also mentioned another possible Chicago sibling. You see, any DNA match will pretty much prove who their father is, while a DNA match with Bettina could prove the current Paul is not the real Paul. Many critics complained about the lack of evidence in our theory. The now Paul can put all these to rest if he can do a public DNA comparison with his brother Paul. If he is not willing to do that, then the second best choice will be to do DNA tests on these illegitimate children. Who are they? Let's take a quick look at Paul's other children. The oldest one is Michelle Lavalier, who later changed her name to Michelle McCartney. Many people think she looks just like Paul McCartney's daughter Mary, and she has played as a left-handed guitarist in an underground rock band. Just like Paul McCartney, she writes songs too. But the problem with her claim is that Paul would only be 17 when she was conceived. As she was born on April 5, 1960, but her birth certificate showed her father to be James Paul McCartney. That was before Paul became famous. Then Miss Bettina Krishpin was born in December 1962 in Germany. Paul was listed as the father on her birth certificate. He paid a child support settlement 
and had a two-year relationship with her mother, Erica Ubers, between 1960 and 1962. But Tina may have the strongest proof to be Paul's daughter, and she fought and got two blood tests done in the 80s when both showed no blood ties with the current Paul. Her mother was so sure she was with no other than Paul during their love affair, she filed fraud charges against Paul, claiming the blood test was done through Paul's body double. However, no one believed her. Although until the DNA is out, no one can know for sure about these claims. I personally will have a hard time questioning Philip's claim. Philip was born on February 10, 1964. Anita was recognized as one of the Beatles' girl. Although Paul was not listed as the father on his birth certificate, Paul's lawyer did pay child support, and he looks exactly like Paul. Even when he was an infant, Philip did not seek a DNA test with Paul, but no one knows what happened. Maybe he had a secret blood test and found there was no match, so he decided to keep his silence to avoid more embarrassment. Or maybe there was a secret settlement. Whatever happened, if Philip is willing to go for a DNA test, the mystery can be solved. The fourth and the newest one is Stephen Dickinson. He decided to make an open plea to Bettina, Philip, and any other possible siblings to do a DNA test with him. He was born July 10, 1967. That means he was conceived right before Paul's passing. On the plus side, his mother knew Paul through her work, and he recalled the Beatles visiting his home when he was seven, two weeks before his mother's early passing at age 42. He said he had a witness of the meeting, but there were questions on his claim because he never shared the information till July 2016. And Paul was not listed as his father on his birth certificate, and his mother was much older than Paul. But he is willing to share his DNA test result. What do the others have to lose? A few viewers question my theory because they think Paul McCartney's children with Linda and Heather look just like Paul. So I pulled up some pictures for a comparison. You see? Even if the now Paul is not the real Paul, they must look alike to pull this off. So new Paul's kids must look like the original Paul, right? Or do they? Watch this interesting analysis and decide for yourself. Wired Italia magazine published forensic evidence in August 2009, showing a lot of undisputable evidence on eye color, height, ear, and teeth. However, nothing seems to work on the non-believers. But let's look at this picture of Paul McCartney and his family. They all have brown hair and eyes. Since brown hair is considered dominant, while blonde and red are recessive, just like brown eyes are dominant and blue or hazel are recessive, Paul must have both dominant brown genes. While in Linda's family picture, we can see Linda and her brother seem to have lighter hair, while both of her parents and other siblings have darker eyes and hair. This means 25% of their children may have light eyes and hair. But Mary is the only one with dark eyes and hair. That is one out of three. I know it is hard to trust this kind of analysis, since you can get even lucky when you roll dice, right? But now take a good look at the McCartney family and decide if they really do look like Paul. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.